it's only over 100 years. Uh, there was a little parish church here given by the Marquis of Donegal, and uh, he gave the church to the town, and he asked that it would be dedicated to St. Anne, because his first wife, Lady Anne, had died. It's quite an emotional space to be in, and it's, it's almost like a haven within North Belfast, because you're right beside some of the busiest uh, roads in North Belfast, but that area is just sort of a tranquil, quiet space. So it gives you an opportunity for reflection and also to share the history and the stories of the people who are buried there. And for the Poor's Ground, those who are buried in non-marked graves, we're lucky that we have the burial registers within the archive here in the Belfast Charitable Society. I think the front door, actually that front staircase, the, the coming in, I love the front hall. Uh, I love the history of it all now that you can see that it's turned into the Heritage Centre. It's lovely to see it being preserved. I love the staircase coming up, the grand staircase, which has been used for many uh, wedding photographs. It's just, as I say, it just feels like home at times to, to us. It was built as a refuge for Jewish refugees from, who came from Europe and they settled around Carlisle Circus uh, over a hundred years ago and that was the spiritual centre of the community. People were arriving and being looked after by other Jewish people and by non-Jewish people. Whenever there was great trouble up here in North Street in North Belfast, we allowed our meeting house to be used by families to come and sleep when it was dangerous for them to be up in their own houses and the mothers and children came and slept here. The Quaker community looked after them. Most people are drawn to the stained glass windows that were preserved there and they are quite stunning. Uh, the, the rose window that looks out onto the Antrim Road and the New Lodge Road is, 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 is particularly catching. The, the thing that I'm most pleased about is the way people use the building. A very strong sense of ownership that the local community have taken. Uh, physically speaking, we, uh, you know, obviously there's been huge changes. We're currently undergoing uh, more refurbishment. The, one of the nicest things I think about the college, we have boys from a full range of backgrounds, but that's probably the nicest thing about it. We've we've a great mix, which uh, is the heart and soul of the place, you know. This is a listed building because the front is um, obviously Victorian, uh, late Victorian, but also then towards the back over the main hall is what's called a Belfast roof, uh, and that's those are few and far between now. Then this pavilion, who would have thought there was a bowling green, a, gr a big green square in this space here? I was, I was firstly just um, taken aback that there was this space even in this street because I was so familiar with this street but um, um, hadn't maybe just quite noticed Donegal Street Congregational Church. Then to go inside it for the first time you realise there's this beautiful little hidden gem in the city, the sanctuary space, when I walked into it for the first time. I remember walking into it from the from behind the pulpit end and opened the door and there's this this, this flood of light that comes through the, the rose um, stained glass window and the vaulted ceilings. That It's just a beautiful space. St Mary's, frankly, it's just a wonderful, wonderful building. It means so very much. It has been uh, a, an iconic building for this community. Architecturally beautiful, decoration was superb. Stained glass windows, yep, absolutely. They were a gift from uh, Mrs. Blagginson Houston and her son, 1868. These are beautiful buildings in a city where beautiful buildings are often raised to the ground. And I think we have a duty to be the custodians of them, to hold them in trust for the city. So the house is full of very interesting and historical resonances and some furniture which is really very attractive, some of which goes back to the 1800s. This is the historic heartland of the city of Belfast, it is. This is where effectively all began. First church was built here, it was opened here in 1815. We have a famous painting here for, by Sir John Lowry, and it was given to the church in 1917 and went on display in 1919. 
and uh, he was born round the corner in, in, North, in North Queen Street. So he presented that to him. That's a very famous painting we have here. It was important to preserve this, um, this iconic building, because it is a beacon in the community. It does mean a lot to me. I, I love the, the beautiful architecture. I know that when you look at um, the Falls Wright Library, they would have beautiful, they would have angels on them. We've got gargoyles. Hearing a story about Notre Dame and the fire and everything like that, and they ha they're obviously significant, the gargoyles. So there's a wee thing that we have that Notre Dame has, is the gargoyles outside. It was a homely place. The fireplaces were in every room. It was all quite grand in that sense. It's quite elaborate and carved. Uh, you know, you had your gates at the front row at the road, and then you walked in through a garden to the building, and the front door was magnificent. To be honest, I enjoy the whole building, but I think my favourite place is on the first floor, which we have a stage and a hall where we celebrate all the festivals. Because it's, being, it's a listed building and it is a heritage building, that is why we have become a part of this Thought Belfast Heritage, you know, the cluster group. So by joining this group, we probably will be able to promote the building as well as our culture to the rest of the people in the Northern Ireland. It opened in 1883 and uh... The statue that's on top of the building is the only equestrian statue in the city of Belfast. It arrived five or six years later from Glasgow. But this building is the headquarters of Orangeism in Belfast. It just means so much to not only the Orange Order, but to the Protestant community in, in large. The amount of artefacts that we have that have social history connected to them is unbelievable.